All right, so up first in our uh, first Jones County High School Sports uh, media night, we have our sideline cheer, head coach Chelsea Asbell. She's going to let her introduce uh, her girl she has with her and kind of talk about the season a little bit. Good evening. I'm Chelsea Asbell. I'm the head coach for sideline cheer. I have my assistant coach, Zali Moreland, here. We have senior Mary Grace, Addie Sifford, Jayla, and Jaleesa Blunt. Um, we're really excited about our season this year. We're going to kick things off this weekend at Buford. We follow into September with our pink out game where we host um, future cheerleaders. We have a clinic and they're able to cheer at the pregame ceremony. We're going to end September with homecoming and looking forward to a great rest of the season and hopefully bringing home a state championship. As always, go Hounds. Anybody have any questions? Awesome. As seniors, I mean, what are you guys kind of looking forward to? This is kind of your last time around, right, as cheerleaders in high school. Kind of what are you guys looking forward to, each of you individually? Um, me specifically, I'm hoping we can bring home a bunch more wins this year, hopefully get farther in the playoffs. I'm really looking forward to senior night and just having a good experience with all my girls this season. I'm looking forward to homecoming and just having a great time with the new girls. Same as Addison, I'm also looking forward to senior night since it's like the big night for a senior. Awesome, and what has kind of cheerleading meant to you guys, right? I mean, I don't know if you guys are going on to do a little more, but just as high school, it's the big part of a lot of the events we see going on. What has it really meant for you guys for you and your four years here? Me specifically, it's probably led me into what I want to do with my life, like my career, so it's done a lot. It's really just been like a backbone my past six or seven years that I've been cheering and it's just helped me get through a lot of situations and helped me become a better person. Being a cheerleader has really like brought me out of my comfort zone and made me want to do more of myself. Cheering for me, it taught me the word sisterhood. Like all of us, we're sisters. We're in this together, we learn from each other. And it's just a great experience to have girls that you can learn from and teach as well. Uh, Kenneth Polk with JCHS today. Uh, I want to know, what are some of the cheers that the team does that gets the crowd most excited? <laughs> Definitely, we are JC and Fire It Up JC are the two most. And the crowd is really a fan of the fight song whenever we get a touchdown and get that extra point. And when it comes to up and coming cheerleaders, what's the one thing that you guys look for to decide from a good cheerleader to a great cheerleader? Um, attitude, <laughs> attitude, and just really like someone know, who looks like they want to do something. Right, the ones who are it. excited to be at practice and just always have a good attitude about it. I appreciate it. <laughs> What's maybe one or two things about cheerleaders that are this is the sport of cheer that you know maybe other people wouldn't think about? What makes it kind of different or unique than than some of the other sports talking tonight? The conditioning. What, what was that? <laughs> the conditioning for cheer. Well, what about the conditioning? It's. Ooh, <laughs> don't think it's easy until it's not. Yeah. They don't really expect us to do anything because they think of us as like just girls who sit there and smile and be pretty, but it's a lot more that goes into it. Like you actually have to be prepared to actually do hard work. Yeah, and the character. A lot of girls don't have good character, but cheerleaders, that's like the number one thing is good attitude. And I feel like one thing that's like sets us aside from other sports. It's like cheer just isn't a team. It's I mean, like it's not just a sport. We go out and do spirit nights at Dairy Queen and have pep rallies at Zaxby's. Like it's like a lot more of like a community thing than it is just a sport that you go to practice and then go home. Yeah. What are you guys looking forward to this season? Basically just the just getting to bond with everybody on the team and doing the spirit, I mean, the um, senior activities that I've been looking forward to since middle school. I'm ready for the pep rally. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> a pep yeah. rally. I'm really looking forward to getting to know the new cheerleaders, like the upcoming freshmen and sophomores, because I haven't really gotten to know them yet, but I am looking forward to see, like, if they're actually into it in the cheer. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the future cheerleader clinic with the little kids, because that's who's going to be coming up in a couple years, and they're so cute. Mm -hmm. They are. <laughs> All right, thank you all very much. Let's give them a round of applause.
Coach Leland Holt and Coach Allie Lowe with our competition cheerleaders. Hey, um, we're looking forward to a great season. Um, we have a, one of the best teams we've had. This is my fifth year coaching for Jones County. Um, right here we've got um, Allie Lowe. She is our assistant coach. We've got Faith Logue. She's a senior. Then we've got Natalie. She is a senior. Then we have Allie, Allie Davis. She is a 11th grader. And then we have Kel Milner, and she is a sophomore. Um, our first competition will be at Morgan County this year um, on September 9th, and we would love to have everybody come out and support us. Natalie and Faith, what is, um, you know, people talk so often about being a senior in a leadership role. What does that look like for, for your guys' team in specific? Um, it's very different leading such a big group of girls, I will say that. Um, but it's very fun to get to like bond more. I feel like I bond more as a senior. Same with Natalie as well. Um, it's different, but I love it. And we try to include everybody, and we love our girls so much. As a team, any specific competitions you guys are looking forward to? Like Coach said, this is one of the better teams you guys have had in the past few years. Anything you guys are looking forward to this, this year? Um, I'm definitely, and I'm sure everyone else is looking forward to regionals and hoping we go to site. Yes, definitely region. Region is a really big deal for us. We actually won in our region last year, and we're definitely looking forward to state this year too. This is my first time like on varsity, so like I'm really like excited and hope that we do make it to region and like state. So I just, I'm really excited about the season. Um, from last year, we did so good last year. I'm so excited to do much better this year because we have such a like better team. And I'm excited for everybody to have fun. Thank you to the state last year. Uh, how motivated are you to get, just get back and be in that atmosphere again? It's, I'm very motivated. The whole team is motivated. It's something we look forward to every day, every practice. I tell them, like, y'all, this is what we're working up to. It's going to stay. What yeah. have you guys done to prepare for the season? We've had practice all summer, like three days a week, like bunch three of, hours. Bunch of conditioning yeah. and running, running and just, yeah. Yeah, and tying into that, we do lots of team bonding as well because we wouldn't be where we're at now without team bonding. As Even though we have lots of conditioning, we always make sure to bond. Uh, what's one thing that you wish everyone saw behind the scenes when it comes to competition cheerleading? Definitely our hard work. We put blood, sweat, and tears into this sport. Yes, there's like multiple times where like we're just exhausted and sometimes we just, oh, it's so hard, but like no one sees us as like a sport, but like I just wish people would like see that how hard we work to put into this. The intensity is a lot too, because I feel like if you don't come in with the right mindset and the right like attitude, then something's gonna go wrong, and that's like a really big problem. Yeah, mindset is a big deal with competition cheer. If you're not in the right mindset, it's not gonna work. We have to all work together, and it's very different because if we don't work together, then it's not gonna all work. So we have to make sure to have everyone in 100%. And I'll say they do all that while looking pretty. They just practice for three hours, and here we are. <laughs> uh, when it comes to coaching cheer, other than winning, what is the one main thing you want your team to take away after each season? My biggest thing is um, being a family, um, learning about God more. We do Bible studies every week. I started that last, last year with them, and it has been like a great team bonding every Monday with them. And so that's my biggest thing is teaching them life skills and about – life outside of here and learning how to work with others. And for me, this I I co or I cheered competition growing up, but this is my first time coaching competition. So it's been interesting to be on the other side of things um, as a coach versus being a cheerleader. But I think one of the biggest things and something that we really agree on and we really always like stay on the same page about is, you know, leave it better than you found it. And to, you know, if, if we're having a bad day, if we feel like you know, mentally we're not there. We always like reel it back in and focus on them as humans first. And I think that has made us strong as a family than just saying, no, we got to practice, practice, practice. We've got to take care of like our mental too. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Let's give the competition cheerleaders a round of applause.
All right, up next we have Coach Kim Hanner with our volleyball team. Thank you. Um, I am Kim Hanner. I'm the varsity coach for the Jones County High School volleyball team. Um, I'd like to introduce my four seniors, my four leaders. This is Nia Warren, Cam Hardwick, Kylie Chastain, and Presley Benson. These are my core, my heart. They are amazing girls. We are entering our fourth season of volleyball, so it's a new program. And these girls have been here since the very beginning. So not only are they great players, but they are great leaders and great people. And I'm so very proud of them. And thank you for the opportunity to be here to be able to brag on them. Coach kind of said you guys set the foundation, right? Here you are as seniors now. Kind of tell me what you guys are proud of that you've kind of done in the past three years now leading up to your senior year here. Um, I would definitely say like how far we come because like when we first came here, like started this, it did not look how it looked now. Like we didn't know like rotations, we didn't know like positions, like we didn't know anything. And I would just say how much we've like built a team like as a family, like in a short amount of time and just how well we just like learned volleyball in a short amount. I would say probably putting in the hard work because, like, as a volleyball team, we're, like, behind everybody. So, like, we have to put in more work and more effort to get where they are. Yeah, I think we've come a really long way from where we started. Like, today we were all just watching film and study all because, like, that's all we had in our huddle. And it was really bad. But, like, to look how far we've come and we've all improved and we've all been putting in the work in off season and, like, in practice. And we've come a really long way. And I think we're going to do really good this year. Yeah, and we've really all built connections like over since we started. We've all gotten way closer, which really helps on the court. So now what are you guys looking forward to this year, right? I mean, your last year around, any certain goals you guys have in mind? Winning. Yeah, definitely. definitely we're winning. going to re we're going all the way. We're being everybody. Yes. We didn't win a lot last year, but we're going to win <laughs> all the way this year. I believe it. Yeah. I would definitely like leaving it better than we found it like set like leaving like an impact since we definitely were like first people here like having something for other people to go off yeah i definitely want us like to be like their role models and like they remember us of who we were yeah i agree with that i feel like we need to leave an impact on them and let them look up to us but definitely winning yeah winning. Winning. yeah definitely winning. <laughs> Y'all obviously reached the milestone last year about winning a couple region matches. How big a step would it be to take that next one and make it stay the same this year? Oh, that would be, be amazing. Like, like, huge. That would be great. Like, the, how fun it is to win and just get points. It is like, it's excitement all over your body. Like, it gives you chills yeah. just watching everybody <laughs> score points and like, just winning the game is so much fun. Yeah. Which, like, at the end of the day, it's, like, not just about winning, but, like, just to see the accomplishment that you made, like, coming from just a four-year team. And I don't know, Coach Aaron, if we ever want to stay, I think we deserve something. I, I, I think you might. <laughs> I think you might. A parade. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, any games we got circled on the calendar this year? Big, big opponents? Locust Grill. Really, yeah, the region I, tournaments, really. I've yeah. always wanted to be a married person, because we always say we do. We're going to beat them, and we never do. Yeah. yeah. We're coming for him. Yeah. Senior night. We've got to, we can't lose on our senior night because I just, we got him this year. I feel like with our schedule, we have like, <coughs> we can beat everybody on our schedule. Yeah. We got some hard teams, but we're pretty hard to beat too. Yeah. <laughs> what she said. What keeps you guys motivated on the hard days? Like, I think like if one of us is down, then we're all down. And like, I think we're a really motivating team. Like, if like one person has a hard practice, we're all there to lift each other up. And like even like today, like I had a, I oh, admit I had a really bad practice. Like looking around and like I stayed after and just working with the other girls and them helping me, it really builds you up. And like it's it's way it's so much funner when you're just having a good time. Yeah. Yeah. The encouragement from other teammates really helps. Yeah. Like I think our team, like we definitely have the mindset that it's not an I thing. Like it's definitely a we thing. And like, I also just try to remind ourselves like why we're here and who we're here for, and like just to keep pushing, like even if we're having a bad game or something. Coach, what's your thoughts? You know, being such a young team, what are some of the struggles and excitements of that? Um, I think the excitement, like being such a like young team, is like seeing how like good we are now like when we get a good hit at practice like we're going crazy like good dig like because before we couldn't do that at all 
like we can't even pick up a ball or something. And like a weakness, like Cam said earlier, is like catching up to these other teams, like teams that have been playing for like eight, ten years. And they all play together in the off season, yeah. and most of us don't even play together in the off season. Yeah. And like a lot of the people in varsity, like we might play club or something. So like we bring those skills back to like our school team, but we still have a lot we have to work on to catch up. Our phrase this year is relentless pursuit. So we're always in pursuit of the next thing. And these ladies know the basics and they've, they're sharing their knowledge. They're not holding that in. It's they, if they see somebody that needs help, they're willing to help the younger players, the JV team. We, a lot of time, most every practice, we um, scrimmage against them, but it's always positive. We, we might win but then they'll help the younger players also. So they have it in them that even though they're seniors and this is their last year, they care so much about the program that that's a thought for them all the time is they want the Jones County High School volleyball program to succeed. And they've actually had a lot to endure over the years because they've had a new coaching staff every year. At least one of their coaches has been new every year and they stick with it, they haven't quit, they're not, they don't get down like and say, I'm, I can't take this anymore. So they, they are great people and they're also all A students. So they work hard on and off the court and that says a lot to me and they have the greatest hearts. They're just good people all around. I appreciate it. All right, let's give the volleyball team a round of applause. All right, up next we have Coach Jeff Moore with our girls cross country team. All right, Rob, in front of you, you got the, the defending 2022 girls region 2A, 2-5A champions. Um, this uh, group finished seventh in the state in 5A last year. This is a very uh, goal-oriented group of kids. Um, very young group. Um, we've only got one senior. Um, we um, graduated two last year that signed schol college scholarships. Um, our goals have not changed. They've just they've well, they have changed. They've gotten more intense. Uh, this this group's had a heck of a summer. Um, these these girls have been running 30 35 miles a week this summer um, in the heat, and uh, they they will they will not accept anything but the win. Um, their goal is to, again to repeat as region champions and another uh, top 10 in the state of Georgia. Um, we just uh, got back uh, about two or three weeks ago from uh, a camp. We brought 35 kids up to Brevard, North Carolina um, for a distance camp in the mountains. Um, they were one of the, the best groups up there and uh, I couldn't be more proud of them. We're, uh, we're gonna, we have our time trials on this, this Saturday and uh, that's gonna set us up for our first meet the following weekend at Locust Grove. Uh, up there, that's where the region championships are going to be in Locust Grove the following weekend. So this is a young group, very goal-oriented goal, goal group, straight-A student group. Uh, I, I could keep on bragging on it, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a special program, a special group of girls. There's only so much you guys can work on to improve, right? As you guys are already region champs now, trying to repeat, what are you guys looking to improve as you go into this new season, especially with all you guys, most of you guys being really young? Um, what we're looking to improve is uh, staying as a team during those really difficult days uh, and those workouts. And um, the way the point system works for cross country, the closer you are together, the more, the better you are. And so we're really trying to work on that at practices and stuff. Coach mentioned the, the time trials coming up, but how does that kind of help y'all set the tone for the year and how important is that? It kind of just lets you know where you're at, like what like the summer did to you, I guess. And it just like lets you know like what you're placing on in the team because our meet is a one week away from time trial. So it kind of just lets you know how the outcome of that race is going to be. Coach, you guys have a very young team, like you stated. How does that excite you for not just the season, but looking forward beyond just this year? There's a lot to look forward to. Um, I kind of blew it. I need to introduce these girls. Uh, I didn't. I missed that part, so I can kind of. I'll kind of hit that question. Man, is Emily uh, Patat? She's our captain. Um, she was all region last year. 
Cameron Walmack, she's our 22, uh, 2022 Girls Region Champion. Um, Addison Robinson, she's our 22, uh, she's all region. She was the runner up in the region. Lily Palmer was first team, um, all region. And on the end is a freshman, very special, you know, uh, Isabella Sanchez. She broke the, the all time uh, middle school uh, cross country record. And there has been some special girls come through this program. So we got a lot to look forward to coming up. A uh, uh, lot of expectations. They, they put pressure on themselves. Uh, they, know, they know what it takes, um, but it's, it, it, it's going to be fun. It's gonna, I'm really looking forward to it. Y'all obviously got the Greyhound invitation coming up. Uh, what, how much more motivation is it to win that? When you serve it more just as that's your home, that's your home course? It's really motivating because nobody knows that course like we do, and it's like that home build advantage. And so we get to go up there a lot to practice, and we really get to put the hard work in, and it pays off on that meet. And it's just better winning like at your own course just because it's like yours, so you just get to feel that victory, I guess. Yeah. I guess also just knowing the course, can like really help you run faster on it and I guess that could help you get new personal records um, for the 5k and stuff. Isabella, for you making the transition, what, what has that been like so far in heading into your freshman season? It's been great. All these girls are very nice to me and it's just been a great time getting to know all of them. Uh, could you describe what the atmosphere is like at practice? You have to stay very, very hot. like, um, mind. Your mind has to be in the right place because yeah. it's very hot and you don't want to run in, like, 98-degree weather. Yeah, yeah. But you just have to stay in the right mindset because if you don't, you're just going to not do good at practice and then that makes you not do good yeah. in competition. Well, obviously, you have to prepare very much physically, but how does the mental preparation come into play? Um, when you have a really uh, difficult practice, like mentally, it really um, it really like takes on takes a toll on you, like at a race. Because uh, if you think about it, at, like practice, like oh, I'm gonna do terrible at this race, I'm gonna do terrible, and like you you let that go into it, it really lets your team down and yourself down. I know it's very hard to just keep on going, and while you're running. Um, your body's constantly telling you to stop and to slow down, but um, the main part of it is just kind of telling yourself, no, I'm okay, I gotta keep on going. Um, so that part is kind of mental. Yeah. All right, well, I appreciate it. All right, let's give the girls cross country team a round of applause. <laughs> All right, up next we have Coach Moore with the boys cross country team. Okay. Um, today we've got the defending uh, 2022 Boys Region 2 5A champions, um, the team that uh, finished fourth in the state of Georgia last year, first podium finish in school history. Um, we've got um, our junior captain, Gunnar Kent. We've got a so sophomore, Luke Thornton, who was first team all region as a freshman last year. We've got sophomore, uh, Tyler Marshall, who was first team all region last year. We've got Grady Newby. It was uh, second team all region last year, and we got Gavin Robinson, who actually uh, ran JV last year. We had a we, uh, Grady actually got hurt at region, and Gavin ended up being uh, fourth on our team and helped us get a podium finish last year. So we were a very deep team. Uh, we're not as deep this year. We lost uh, two seniors that uh, signed college scholarships. Uh, actually, lost four four boys that were in the top seven last year. So. Um, this is a very, very, very young group, but the the uh, the goals have stayed the same. They, you know, region champion or bust, and uh, you know, top five, top ten in the state is what their expectation is of their self and each other. Um, they uh, just like the girls; they put a lot of pressure on their self to to perform. They uh, show up to practice, and uh, you know, they, it's, it's business time when they show up to practice. They they know what they've got to do. These boys have been, uh, at least like the girls, they went to camp. They've been putting in 40 plus miles in the last couple of weeks. Um, so they know what it takes to be to be champions. Um, and uh, I couldn't be proud of this group. 
some of you sophomores, right? Coach just said you guys lost a lot of quality runners. How are you guys trying to step up and fill in those roles for these guys who have left? I feel like we really got to step up our game. You know, uh, people are going to say we're good, but I like to think there's always people better out there, always out working. There's, there's always room for improvement. Our times can always get better, and we got to fill in for all our seniors that we lost. Coach, you mentioned that they were you had girls and boys as region champs. How does it feel to have two very successful programs? Well, it was the first first time it's happened since 1996, uh, and I think we were AAA back then. 5A in our region is a whole other ball game. 5A is, a, is, is maybe the toughest classification. Um, um, it's, it's special. It's special. Uh, this is my, see, this will be my seventh year as head coach. And, um, you know, we took a uh, program that was, we, we did, the boys weren't even making it to state. We couldn't even finish in the top five. And now we're, you know, defending champions and uh, the expectations have changed. Okay. And that's something they've done. Um, they challenge each other and their self all the time, and they know that they don't want to be the team that didn't win region or was not as good as the, the boys that were here before us. Um, and, uh, you know, they've, I've got three or four guys up here that they think they could break the county record this this year. So they they put a lot of pressure on themselves, and they want to be great. Gunner, as a junior captain, right, you'd say you're kind of young to be a captain, usually the seniors, but how are you kind of stepping up in that role and leading these younger guys this year? Um, really, I just try to keep them motivated, uh, keep all of us together as a team, because if we're not a team, we're, we don't function. So we got to really work together, and that's where I come in. I try to help us get that closer bond and help us run better and help us keep us on track. Yeah, and a lot of the times we think cross country is individualized sport, right? You're running for your own times, but like you said, it's very team oriented. What kind of practices or what do you kind of practice team-wise or maybe bonding you guys to just to kind of get that mindset that, hey, we're not just individuals here, but we're also a full team going into this? I think our biggest was at camp. We, uh, we really bonded there. We had a bunch of team bonding activities that we did. Um, and then back at home, we just, we really are one. We, uh, we share all of our stuff together. We, we, you know, we laugh together and we just have a really good time. And when we're running, we never leave anybody if we can afford it. So we really just try to stick together as much as possible. All right, sophomores. <laughs> um, what has this experience been like, kind of the younger guys on the team looking up to guys like Gunner? But I know Coach mentioned, you know, you guys had a couple guys go to, you know, go off and do really good things with cross country in college. What, is, what has this experience been like for you guys so far? Well, it's kind of made it worse. We have to step up a ton. And now we gotta really start pushing it because we got a, a lot of other schools that have a lot of seniors still, and yeah, we just got a lot of push to catch up to them. I think it's uh, it's more like a uh, we got a we got a big gap between freshmen and last year, uh, last year's seniors that uh, we gotta kind of fill in, and we gotta step into that spot. We gotta be like the the juniors on the team pretty much as a freshman, which was kind of difficult, but I think we've filled in so far pretty well, and I think we can continue to do that. What I feel like that we need to work on more is doing our exercises and doing the little things that we need to do to be able to be like the seniors that we had last year. Kind of big back, how much are you guys looking forward to kind of carving out your own legacy on the state of well, we plan on winning region again, and we try, we're going to try and get top five at state like we did last year. So we're looking to do about the same. And like we said, there's teams in our region that's also stepping up their game. They're getting good, but we're out here, and, you know, my mindset is no matter how hard you work, there's always somebody working harder. So you just got to keep filling in. You got to keep going. Uh, I asked the girls this kind of same idea, but what mental uh, preparation goes into each race for you guys? Well, if you don't have a strong mindset, you ain't going to run good. You know, your body will keep going. If your mind tells you you can't, your mind always shuts down for your body can't. So you got to prepare your mind because if your mind ain't good, your run ain't good. 
Yeah, these these boys are prepared. They 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 show up for practice and uh, the intensity. They, they, there's not a whole lot of complaining. Okay, I mean, like, I mean, running running's tough. Running's tough. Uh, I think they do it uh, for the competition. Uh, this is a very close knit boys. You can find them at Dairy Queen on Wednesdays at the Bible study, and they go to church together a lot, and they. They go to the movies. I mean, they, they, whenever I see one of them, most of them are around each other. And they just, I think they really talk to each other and they keep each other up and they get their mind right uh, for, for practice because if, if you can't, if you can't uh, run hard at practice, you're not going to run hard in a race. That's just the way it is. And they know that. They know that. Uh, and they were taught that by the seniors that were on this team last year. And they want to they wanna keep expectations up and um, they want to build their own legacy, just like we talked about. All right, thank you guys. Let's give the boys cross country team a round of applause. All right, up next we have Coach Tripp Burt with our girls softball team. Uh, thank y'all for coming out tonight. Like Coach Gilhouse said, I'm Coach Burt. Uh, I'm the softball coach here at Jones County. Uh, we're ready to get our season started this year. Uh, as you might know, our, our program's had a good bit of success the past couple of years. Uh, the past two years, we've been able to win the region. Uh, and in 2020, we're state champions. Uh, in a second, I'll introduce some of these young ladies I have with me. Coming in this year, we still have high expectations. Last year, we graduated five starters, which, you know, is a big shoes to fill. Uh, but luckily, we've got a ton of talent returning, uh, you know, some great players. Uh, to my left here, I have Kimber Kent. This Kimber's a senior this year. She's a four-year starter for us. So she's a two-time region champion and a state champion. Uh, she's also been an all-state player as well. Uh, next to her is senior Bailey Jackson. Uh, Bailey was all-region last year, um, had a good year at the plate. We're expecting another one this year. Uh, she'll play a little infield and DP for us. Next to her is Ansley Pegg. Ansley's a junior. Uh, last year, Ansley was co-region pitcher of the year as a sophomore, uh, which is a very impressive feat. Uh, and next to her, we have Trinasia Parker, who's also a junior. Uh, Trinasia last year was All-State uh, and set a school record for home runs. So even though we lost five seniors to graduation, we returned a ton of talent as well, well some great underclassmen as well. And we're excited to get the season started tomorrow at Pike County. Awesome. Remember, as someone who's Gotten a state championship right now. As where you're sitting, what do you think this team has to do? You guys lost a lot of players. What do you think needs to be done to go and win another state championship this coming year? You know, I think um, a lot of leadership, a lot of leadership skills. Um, I think we have a lot of talent coming up. We have a very young group, but they have a lot of talent. But I believe uh, this year, for us to go pretty far, we need a lot of leaders, and I think we can do that. Trinasia, after you know, beating doing what you did last year, what's what's next up for you? What's what's how do you, you know, level up your own goals and expectations for yourself? Um, I'm gonna just keep on doing what I did last year and just keep on hitting and next look for the next approach. Mm -hmm. Like and just yeah, I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. And don't stop. With the success that y'all have had over the past few years, tons of players going on to, to do great things. Uh, Destin comes to mind up the road at UGA. What what is Seeing players like her go off to do those good things, whether your expectation is to, to play in college or not, how exciting is that to just continue that legacy? You know, uh, Destin was a pretty big leader for us when, especially my freshman and sophomore year. Um, just to like know and be around her, it was very, it was just very great to know like her leadership impacted all of us, especially me, because you know, as a senior now, uh, it's just great to know that leadership skill like before. And, um, you know, I, I just love being around her. Um, to second that, Destin was a senior when I was a freshman. And she was the biggest leader on the team that I knew. And she really kept me motivated to pitch. And seeing her in the weight room and doing her weights and knowing that, like, she is going to Georgia to play, which is a pretty big deal. Um, she was a sophomore. I mean, I was a sophomore. <laughs> when she was a senior, but um, seeing her do her work and seeing how it paid off for her kind of motivates me to do mine. And now as a senior, when I do my reps and I do everything I'm supposed to do, I hope that the freshmen can look up to us as seniors and see us as role, mo as role models. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not to like cheat themselves and just keep on like going, do every rep and every like, yeah, just. <laughs> Yeah, just just keep on going and just keep doing it. Like, just yeah, because I pressure myself to do that. 
How much did um, losing your hero to the Super Regionals last year, how much does that look at the digital? Because obviously you want to get back to Columbus. But how much of a digital uh, did that consume you all season? Uh, you know, this summer uh, we've been working hard. We've had um, practices Monday through Wednesday in the in the heat, you know, but we've um, we've overcome that. And we just make sure to work hard. And you know, losing Super Regionals last year, that's really kind of motivated all of us to, you know, uh, work harder, um, communicate better, and um, just go, go win it, go far, go to state. Um, for me, teamwork is a huge thing because getting along on the field and off the field is a big way of communication on the field and working as a team together. I don't know if you guys have noticed, a lot of teams from Middle Georgia, Little League, other leagues around have been really killing it this summer. Does it, how do you guys feel when you see these younger girls out there just competing at the highest level, making it to World Series? Like, when you guys are just looking for the next gen, what excites you about the sport, just this, this next gen of girls coming up? Um, it's, just, it's great to see the sport of softball expand because, you know, like when we get older and stuff, we can look back at that and just remember all the memories that we've had with it. And it's just great to see the, the sport expanding. Seeing younger girls love this sport as much as we love this sport just means a lot because, you know, like after high school, some of us aren't going to play college, but knowing that there's a next generation coming up that just loves the sport as much as us, just it really is like Yeah, like when I see those girls, I'm like, they make they pressure me to do like work harder and like just show them like, yeah, you can do what I'm doing, I can do it, yeah. Um, off of what Trinesia said, um, I want them to be able to look up to us and want them to work hard and want to be there. Um, at practice, what is the one mindset that you want the team to have? <laughs> during each practice and as you go into the season? I feel like lifting each other up. You know, everyone makes mistakes at practice, and we just have to make sure that we build each other up instead of tearing each other down. And you know, again, it's a mindset thing. We're in the heat, and we're all going to make mistakes. So it's just better just to keep everyone, you know, just building each other up and just making sure that they're, they're all right. Yeah, softball isn't a sport that you can be afraid to fail at. You are going to make a mistake, and you just, as a team, you just kind of have to build each other up. Practices can get chaotic with your outfield groups, your infield groups, pitchers and catchers hitting, and you just kind of have to focus in and say, Coach Brooks says, all gas, no break at practice. <laughs> when you're playing, you're playing. Um, at practice, I, we try to focus on working not with ourselves, but with each other, because that's how it's going to be in a game. and. Working together is a huge thing for us because when we don't, it doesn't end well. Yeah, just like just to make sure you do the little things correctly and then don't be scared to make a mistake and just keep the uh, All gas, no breaks. Is that, is that a little tough to keep up in the Georgia heat sometimes? Uh, oh, yes, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Our water breaks are not taken for granted. No. <laughs> <laughs> sure How does that just kind of help you all to push? And be better game day. Um, you know, we gotta adapt to the heat. So with these breaks, you know, when we get to the dugout, we're very thankful because you know it's about like 98 degrees outside. So um, you know, during these water breaks too, we get a lot of time to communicate with each other as well, and which will help build our team up. So I also like that part. Yeah, when we're practicing and it's like all gas no breaks. Practice when you're practicing at the like hardest you can. You make mistakes. But making mistakes makes you better, so hopefully you won't make them in a game. And so it's just like practice as hard as you can so you can play as hard as you can in the game. Coming in as defending champs, what's that like coming into this season? Is there added pressure? Um, you know, as a four-year starter, I've kind of just – my passion for softball has grown each and every year. And so I'm not the one typically to – get a bunch of pressure on me. So I believe that this season is going to go great, just like all the other ones that we've had. And I believe that we're going to go far this year. I believe all together as a team, we have a lot of potential to be great and do great things. You know, looking at the underclassmen, uh, what's the one thing that 
you look for in a player that separates them from just being a good player to a great player? Hustle. Hustle is definitely one. And, um, you know, lazy players, they won't go far. And as we tell our younger our younger kids, we, we try to coach them up and we try to tell, tell them, you know, hustle on and off the field wherever you go. And that's just really a, a big thing for softball especially, so. I would say be coachable. If you're not coachable, you're not gonna get very far. Um, attitude on and off the field is a huge thing. And if we were to want to go to college, that's what they all look at. And but being able to bond with the girls and having a good attitude is just, it looks better on you and it feels better together as a team. Yeah, just, just making sure you do the little things and making sure you communicate. That's like really big because if you don't communicate, somebody can get hurt. So, yeah. Appreciate it. I just want to tell you, being on the first team that Jones County High School ever had as a softball team, y'all make me very proud. I see the way y'all walk around the school. I see the way you help hold your heads up. The attitude on that ball field and off that ball field. What's one thing that each one of you are going to take away from this year that four years later you're going to look back and say, I'm proud I did that? Um, I know making friendships, a lot of friendships were made, a bunch of friendships, and I would definitely never forget. Um, you know, yeah. And the leader, the leaders that I've been surrounded by, I believe that they've just impacted my life with just having those leadership skills with younger girls, especially for this year, so. Um, definitely the family we've all built together. The coaches, the teammates, everyone. It's just a family and I really enjoy spending time with all of them. Yeah, it's just, you just want to look back and be like, yeah, I did, I did that. And <laughs> 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 like you said, yeah, it was like 40 years later. I want to be like, yeah, I want, yeah, I want to look on to the other team. Like, look, yeah. All right, thank you, girls. Let's give our softball team a round of applause. <laughs> All right, and to close out our night, we're going to have Coach Chastain uh, with a couple of his coaches and football players. All right, tonight we have um, four of our seniors. Uh, we got four, I'll start on the end down there where uh, our two of our coaches down there on the end, one on the very far end, we got Will Connor, our defense coordinator. Uh, right beside him, we got Kevin Patterson, the assistant head football coach and strength conditioning coach, um, also coach of receivers. Uh, beside him, we got Chandler Harris, jack of all trades, plays uh, linebacker, D, uh, DN, tight end. And anything on special teams, he can do it all. Austin Hanks, uh, Chandler's a three-year starter. Austin Hanks, a two-year starter at center. Um, really, really the brains of the, uh, of the bunch up front. Does a great job. Jamar and Parker, four-year starter at nose guard. Also play some tight end. Uh, got some good hands. He's athletic. Um, then we got Judd Anderson, a two-year starter for us at quarterback. Uh, really excited about this bunch. Uh, we have this is only four of of 36, excuse me, 32 seniors that we have. Uh, we got a really big senior class, one of the biggest senior classes uh, I've ever been associated with. And, uh, and uh, with that comes a, a lot of expectations of, of, of really, really good leadership. And uh, uh, these guys have, have done a great job leading so far and hopefully carry on over. Coach, talk about 32 seniors, that's a lot, right? And last year wasn't the best of seasons. Kind of how do these guys turn it around, especially with all the experience coming back this year? Yeah, yeah. Um, last year we started off slow, had some injuries. Um, I think most of these guys understood uh, the deal last year. Then, then we go into the playoffs in the first round and play Ware County. We lost to the state champions for the past four years. We've we've um, we've lost to the state champion, and um, uh, our guys are, are are geared up to to, to change that. And um, so um, that's the goal. And, and hopefully we had a, we've had a really really good off season. We um, uh, we in, in fake football, like I like to say, uh, we we won the went up to. Uh, UGA and they had a 32 team uh, 707 tournament and uh, we, we won that that deal with with a lot of really really good teams in it 7A teams some teams from all over the southeast playing in it and uh, we were we were really proud to win that uh, but again that's not blocking and tackling football is about blocking and tackling and getting those big big uglies up front uh, getting involved and, and uh, they do a great job these these ain't the uglies I'm talking about these are good looking guys <laughs> 
Judd, first year, last year at Jones County. What did you learn about Jones County football in your first year? Uh, for sure, it's different. Um, these guys, they play different. I mean, it's it's you come to work every day, and you can't. It's no days off, and you're constantly working. You're constantly hustling. And I think that's that's one of the biggest things that I learned last year is the the level these guys hold themselves to. And I think I, I became a part of that culture. And I mean, it's really about all of us, and it's really about what we do. And how, how we do it, and that's so important. For the rest of the guys, I mean, how comfortable and confident are you with, with Judd kind of leading the way this year for you guys? <laughs> <laughs> um, me personally, uh, with Judd at quarterback, I feel very confident. You know what I'm saying? As an O-line, I feel like we feel very confident with him behind us, you know what I'm saying, protecting him, make sure he's all good. And he comes in every day. Puts in the work in the weight room, in the classroom, on the field. So I feel confident that he's a he's a good leader on the field and off the field. Yeah, obviously scratch a beat for Friday and not reach the schedule. You go against Perry, Northside, Aquila, and Peach. How how much of a leg up you think that gives you guys that you get for the region? No doubt, no doubt. We, we we choose to play a really tough schedule so we can see our uh, how uh, how good our guys can be on things that we need to work on to get ready for playoffs. It's, I, I feel like it's bode well for us the past few years. Um, uh, you know, a couple of years ago we beat North Gwinnett up there at seven A school. That's uh, uh, generally in the in the finals or, or or playing forward or doing a really good job there. We uh, we played Grayson one year that we, we we didn't do too good in that game, but we saw a lot and and um, it got to the semifinals that year. Uh, so we, we feel like um, o over the years that playing those good teams really really gets us ready to play in big time atmospheres and and also um, get us ready to play really good competition in the, in the playoffs. Coach Chastain talking about blocking and tackling up front. How do you guys kind of embrace that? Sort of bring your lunch pail every day kind of mindset and how do you guys approach that? Well, you got you to learn how to train. Even when uh, you're going to have injuries, um, you just have to learn how to keep going. Um, when it's hot, when it's tough, you just got to keep going. Um, in our position, we didn't ever see a play. You don't get banged up. Got to work through it. Oh, you're going to get banged up. That's part of trench life. you got to embrace it. Yeah. Coach, what have you seen from your, your guys up front in that capacity? Um, we've got uh, <clears throat> a lot of experience come back on defense. Uh, they're flying around right now. Uh, they're having a lot of fun getting after it. You can tell we've been getting after it, too, as coaches. <laughs> um, yeah. But they've bought into the new system. And, and the way they just have each other's back out there, uh, it's, it's, it's great to see. It's great to be a part of. You guys opened the season at Mercer. You did that again last year. And what's kind of different or unique about that sort of atmosphere? Yeah, I mean, anytime you get to play in a college stadium, especially around the team we have and these group of guys, I think it's you know, every game special, and then no matter where it's at. And I think we, we're a team, and uh, even now, like like Coach said, 32 seniors, like that's a big – it's a big group, and I mean, it's constant, constant leaders, and it, everybody knows it's it's that last first game, you know. And this week is that last first scrimmage we get, so I think I think that's so important, and I think it's really really special. I'd like to pick up on what Judd said, uh, playing in a college stadium, most people don't get to do that in their lives. So just giving the opportunity to play with one of our brothers, um, and fight, I like it. Most of you seniors have been here for a few years now, right? Kind of talk to me about the importance of your leadership on the field. The coaches can do as much as they want prepping up to game day, even on game day on the sidelines. But as you guys down on the field in the trenches, how important is your leadership, especially with 32 of you guys leaving soon, right, to get those next guys in and ready and have the same culture you guys are building? Um, as an O-line, uh, I feel like being a leader of the O-line, you have to have a bunch of responsibilities. You know, getting the calls right, make sure everybody's doing their job, make sure we all is one on the same goal, same path. Yeah, and I think um, kind of picking up where Austin left off, I think that's just being a leader and ultimately being an influence to those guys, leaving a legacy is what I've always perceived it as. And being able to just as a group of seniors, and it's a big group, and I think leaving our legacy on those guys and leaving – uh, legacy of work work ethic and just hustle and just constantly coming to work every single day, that blue-collar mentality. And I think Coach always says chasing best, and I think that's one of those things that we got to teach those guys. And, it's I mean, 
it's always on the players. The coaches can preach it, preach it, preach it. But those players, they, we make it happen. And I think that's, that's where it comes from. What would you say your team identity is this year? I think our team identity really lies in who we are as people as well as players. Like we are, I mean, obviously you look at our offense, you look at our defense. I mean, it's going to be highly explosive and everything. But honestly, it's a group of guys that we're constantly in communication with each other. We're constantly working as a team. And I mean, when one guy slacks off, you got another guy to pick him up. And I think that's, that's our team mentality is a group of leaders and ultimately a group of guys that always just come to work every day. Like I said, that blue collar mentality. So. Yeah, you went on a pretty cool run last spring with the basketball team, right? You guys did phenomenal. Kind of tell me, how did that kind of maybe help you get a little better in shape for the football season? And just how was all that leading up to the summer and getting back to football? Yeah, I mean, that, that run was great and everything. And that's a great group of guys as well. But ultimately, getting back with these guys were was the best thing that I could have been a part of. I mean, this is, this is such a great group. And it, it's a group of guys that... Is just always ready to learn, ready to work, and getting back in here. That, this is what I do. This this is a this is what we do, and this is what we we're all waiting to get back in in December and in in the spring. Also, I'll bet you uh, everyone with your receiver group talks about Zion. How much you got a whole other four or five guys? Just what makes those guys just fun to practice and play with? Yeah, I think um, every single one of these guys it makes it fat, fun to play with because. It's um, so special to be around these guys because it's a big group and it's a big group of seniors. So they know, everybody knows it's that last ride, that last, that last season we get. And I think that's, that's where it comes from. And no matter, you can pick one or two guys out, but ultimately it's, it's a collective group and nobody can take that away from us. And so I think that's, that's so important. With all the new coaching staff moves, what new energy have the coaches brought to the team on and off the field? <laughs> they brought the heat. <laughs> we've, been, we've been going hard since January in the weight room, in the classroom, learning these new schemes. I feel like um, everybody's bought in and uh, really looking forward to the season. I feel like they brought the juice. You know, uh, high on jacks is a very important thing we do in the weight room to get us hyped before, the, um, before we lift weights and stuff. And just the mentality of picking everybody up, even when they're down, to get people, other people to pick people up, I feel like that's a great thing that the coaching staff has done. Uh, what's one thing that you want to see the team accomplish for this Friday's uh, scrimmage? Ultimately, just to get better. I think that's, that's one of the biggest things. That's one of the things we teach. Like, obviously, like our goal, our, one of our mottos this year, like I said, is chasing best. So I think that was... We as a team, we, we're always chasing best, so we're always trying to get better, and we're always trying to keep working and keep keep our identity and keep what we're doing. One of our big goals this week for me as a head coach is is, is compete. I mean, we're, we're definitely going to be playing some really good players. Uh, if you go look down their roster, they got guys getting, being offered all over the country. But our deal is is seeing our guys compete because week in and week out, we're going to play one or two. We might not play as many as that, but we're going to play some uh, really good players better than some of the players that we're playing this week. And I, I want to be able to see – what guys you can count on when they, they got to go against somebody really, really strain and fight a little bit against better, some, some really, really good competition. And um, that, that's, that's the goal, and that's what you like to see from playing a really good team uh, like we're playing this week. Could you describe to me what the atmosphere is like, you know, coming out of the tube on a Friday night? Great. I love it. <laughs> uh, so hype, you know, the fans riled up. You know, we just went all together running out as a brotherhood. I feel like it's just a great a great atmosphere. You know, the music playing, cheerleaders there. I just feel like it's great. We just all as one, as one team, as one family. Yeah, Friday night football, ain't nothing better than it. And so I think that it's one of those things and just getting the barking lot going, uh, it was definitely one of, the, one of the special things that we have. And I think it gets everybody riled up and, we're, we're all getting each other riled up, so it's really special. Appreciate it. All right, thank you, guys. Uh, let's give the football team a round of applause. And, and with that, that concludes our first fall sports media night.